Welcome to your Ozarks Local News. It is finally Friday again. Finally. <laughs> finally, finally, finally. Waited all week. I'm Melanie Chapman. And I'm Aaron Nolan. Thanks for tuning in. We start tonight with your 9 at 9. The top nine stories you need to know before you go to bed. A woman in her 90s beat up by an intruder. She's recovering tonight. The home invasion happened early this morning east of Spokane. A burglar got into a house with three women inside. The culprit is still on the run. Kevin Schwaller spoke with one of the victims of the assault who is thankful to be alive. Edith Burke says she couldn't see who was in her home. It was dark the early morning hours, and she suspects the person may have known the layout of the house. You still never even locked a door. The walls of Edith Burke's home hold memories of family. I'm 92 and a half. <laughs> Burke says 19 adopted kids passed through this home. And about 4 o'clock I heard her uh, making a noise and I jumped up. This memory. I didn't have time to get scared. Is one Burke could have done without. An assault on her and one of her daughters. Yelled Angel, I'm coming. Burke says an intruder left her with reminders of the attack in bruises and cuts. He come out of her room and run into me and knocked me down. And then when he knocked me down, he went stomping me. She tried to fight him off. Then she yelled for her other daughter. Rosetta, get the gun. There's a man in here. The guy jumped out the window. I've got a big board over it. Burke says if she hadn't yelled for a gun, it could have been worse. I think he would have killed us. You sound like you put up quite a fight. I had to because he was determined to. The memories from tonight are better. God had to be with me or with us. Knowing this family is safe and together. The family believes the intruder specifically targeted their home. However, Christian County Sheriff Joey Kyle could not immediately or did not immediately know why that may be. Well, we sat down with Sheriff Kyle. He couldn't get into many details about this case, but he did say he's not too worried about the safety of the neighborhood. And situations such as this one emphasize the need for people to take precautions for their own safety. That's a very dangerous crime to be the victim of. I mean, that's it's very fluid and um, it's extremely dangerous. Uh, the, these ladies were fortunate. Breaking news tonight out of Taney County. Firefighters believe a grass fire is nearly contained. More than 50 acres burned in Hollister. The Western Taney County Fire Protection District says a piece of farm equipment malfunctioned, which started the flames. It destroyed two outbuildings. A farmer suffered minor burns. A follow-up now to the arrest of an accused cattle rustler. A 67-year-old man from Monette is charged with stealing cattle from two farms in Greene County. He could be responsible for more. And getting this guy was no easy task. <coughs> Dozens of cattle stolen in the night. Farmers' livelihoods jeopardized. Uh, dealing with the, the parasites of society as far as I'm concerned. Seven cows were taken from Jim Pipkin's Springfield Farm last June. Sure, we'd like to have them back, but I want the people that did it worse than I want the cattle. Then it happened. After a 12-hour manhunt throughout Greene County, 67-year-old Howard Perriman of Monet was arrested Thursday evening. Investigators from seven different counties have worked months to link Perriman to crimes. Stolen cattle and equipment worth more than $100,000. Uh, everybody's been kind of on edge. Um, the farmers have been trying to watch for each other. Investigators got their break in the case when more than a dozen head of cattle were taken from this farm in Walnut Grove. The thief may have gotten away with the cattle, but he left something very important behind. Investigators say they found a paper towel in the tire tracks where the cows were stolen. That paper towel had DNA evidence. The DNA matched Paramin's. It also matched the DNA in four other cases. Now Paramin is charged with stealing cattle from Jim Pipkin and the cattle from Walnut Grove. Even though this accused cattle rustler is off the fields, farmers are still not at ease. We, I know we've already kind of, you know, you can't take your guard down at all because just because one guy's caught don't mean there ain't somebody else out there, but if, but if he is the head honcho of it all, then that'll sure help things. It Okay, so what about all the other cattle that have been taken mm -hmm. from farms over the past few months in, in, the, in the area? Well, investigators are working to see if Paramin may be responsible for some of those. The agencies are all talking amongst each other, sharing their evidence, and obviously uh, talking to this guy. And I know those farmers are, are pleased on one hand, mm -hmm. but definitely hesitant to be overjoyed because who knows what the future holds as cattle rustling seems to have become really an it thing among criminals here yeah, in hearing. southwest Missouri. All right, let's turn it over to the weatherman with the plan. Jamie Warner joining us now. And uh, Jamie, the monkeys 
They're gonzo. We, we moved gonzo. them out. Yeah, it's just like a bulldozer. That front sort of <laughs> pushed out all of that mugginess, at least yeah. in most of the area. Not everybody, though, got rid of the muggies. Uh, areas toward Highway 71 and West, still looking at muggy conditions and hot conditions today, and I'll show you that here in a second. Let's take a look at the numbers so, so far for the month here in Springfield, and we really haven't seen any sustained heat and humidity. We started off the month very comfortably. Of course, the early to middle portion of this week, it did get hot. It was humid. But we had that front that came through a couple of nights ago, and today was certainly a lot more comfortable, especially this morning. Here's a look at highs today across the area, and there is a range, a big range. 83 in Rolla, that was the afternoon high. Here in Springfield, 88, but to our west, some are holding on, Joplin and Fayetteville, both a high of 94. And we saw dew points uh, in the mid to upper 60s in both of those locations. So that's where the summer muggies are lurking right now, just to the west. But we're going to keep this July delight in place for a couple more days before the muggy conditions return to the area. Your forecast for tomorrow uh, looks like it'll be a nice one. Starts off very pleasant with temperatures in the low 60s. And afternoon highs tomorrow, again, only in the upper 80s. We're going to be tracking a backwards moving storm out of the Ohio Valley and across our area late this weekend. What that will mean for our weekend forecast. Also take a look at the return of heat and humidity to all of the area later next week. Jamie, thank you. In an exclusive story tonight at 9, Dallas County parents of students who were molested by a teacher are ready to face off with the school district. Mediation in a federal civil lawsuit begins next week. Two years ago, 20-year-old Ralph Eugene Moyle was a third grade teacher at Long Ling Elementary when he was accused of molesting male students under the age of 14. Moyle lost his teaching certificate in 2012. He pleaded guilty to a number of charges, including one count of attempted statutory sodomy and three counts of first-degree statutory sodomy. Moyle was sentenced to 15 years in prison. And according to a lawsuit filed by the family, the school district did not do enough to protect the children from this teacher. Teacher. Parents believe Moyle lured the students as one, you know, one as young as 11 in a closet with candy saying he had to, quote, discipline them. The parents claim they complained, telling the school Moyle would go into the bathroom, hold students' hands, and watch them use the restroom. The lawsuit says these and other behaviors should have been caught by the school district and possibly could have prevented the children from being sexually assaulted. We are choosing not to show the parents' faces to protect the underage children. Sick, you know, uh, as a dad, you're, it's, it's your uh, responsibility to protect your family, protect your kids. The school and, was supposed to be a safe place to yeah. go. We contacted the Dallas County School District, who is the only entity named in this lawsuit. We did not get a response. You can see the entire civil lawsuit with more details about the case in our website, OzarksFirst.com. Missouri schools can now teach gun safety courses to students as young as first grade. Governor Jay Nixon signed Senate Bill 75 into law. Part of that bill allows use of the National Rifle Association's Eddie Eagle Gun Safe Program. That program encourages children to not approach a weapon if they see one. The course is not mandatory. Senate Bill 75 also transfers the concealed carry weapon permitting process from the Missouri Department of Revenue to the county sheriffs beginning August 28th. Now, that means Missourians will go directly to their sheriff's office for the CCW permit rather than receiving an endorsement on their driver's license. More than 100 vendors will move into their new home at the Farmer's Market of the Ozarks tomorrow morning. Workers were still putting on some finishing touches tonight. The Farmer's Market now has its own permanent building just behind Farmer's Park at Republic Road and Nature Center Way. Construction on that development should be complete in November. New at 9 tonight, former U.S. Open champ and one of the most recognizable faces in tennis is in the Ozarks. Andy Roddick may be retired from pro tennis, but tonight he's playing for the Springfield Lasers. This afternoon, Roddick talked about returning to the Ozarks and the fan support of his new team. Not for a decade, so it's... Uh... You know, it, it, it's it's nice to see. I mean, the, the crowd the first night was a lot of fun, and, and I really enjoyed it. And um, you know, the, the Lasers really kind of had the spirit of uh, of what uh, what you shoot for in world team tennis. Of uh, course, we're going to have more from Roddick and how he played tonight. That is coming up with Nick later in sports. The sweetest comeback in the history of ever is coming to the Ozarks. <laughs> That's right. Tomorrow, Walmart's around Springfield should have those guys, the Twinkies. <laughs> 
Although the snack hit the retail giant shelves three days ahead of its anticipated return nationwide, for some, Walmart rolling out the first batches of new Twinkies in 1,600 stores today. Unfortunately, the three in Springfield I called doesn't have them tonight. You worked very hard on that. I know, it's Twinkies. According to a company spokeswoman, by Sunday, Twinkies will be available in 3,000 Walmart stores. The retail is selling the, quote, first batch Twinkies. It's even on the box. Twinkies and other Hostess products have not been produced since November when Hostess brands filed for bankruptcy and was later bought out by private equity groups. You remember when the Hostess stores closed, people were lined up to get their hands on those Twinkies and Ho-Hos and Ding-Dongs and all that good jazz. But now they're on the shelves. It's going to be interesting to see what happens on Sunday. Hey, I went... Bye. I went today to the store on Kearney, mm -hmm. asked the assistant manager, where are the Twinkies? <laughs> he said, they're getting them tonight. They'll be on the shelves tomorrow. So a little early for Springfield folks. Don't forget that. Uh, I think the one on Campbell will also have them tomorrow. One on Battlefield will not have it until Sunday or Monday. You have been doing your research. Nice work there, Nolan. Hey, when it comes to... Uh, the sweets, this tooth knows it all. <laughs> all right. Well, this leads us from our viewer interaction time to our viewer interaction time. It is time for your voice to be heard. Every night we ask a question on our Facebook page, and we give you, the Ozarks, a chance to sound off. So are Twinkies really the best comeback ever? <laughs> our question tonight, what is the greatest comeback in the history of ever? That Let's is, just say it. That might be the greatest uh, question in the history of it sound off. It could be. Coming up, I'm going to tell you what I think is the greatest comeback ever. And yeah. you don't know what it is. No, but my yeah, wheels are spinning. Uh, is it a, is it a, a surprise? A musical band? I don't know. Uh, okay. We'll wait and see. All right, to get involved in the conversation, like the Color 10 and KOZ on Facebook page. Leave your comment on our Ozark sound off question of the night, and you know what's going to happen. We're going to tell everybody in the Ozarks what you think. So beware when you type that message on Facebook. Also, check out our social media outlets. We are always looking for ways to get our viewers involved. So please like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, email us, or send us any story ideas, any comments you may have. Later in the show, we have sharks falling from the sky, a super breakup, and more from a national court case. We've also got this song. You know this guy, don't you? I do, but there's a reason we're playing it. We're going to tell you about it coming up in the trends. Always looking for a reason to play some JT. But first, we have Jamie. He's over in the Weather Lab checking out our weekend forecast. Weather is right out. He's studying that over there, isn't he? Look at him. Jamie's over there. What? <laughs>